Hi, Kelly here from Buffalo Art Room. Today we're going to paint a hummingbird. I'm going to do wet on wet, so make it your own. You don't have to do the colors that I do. I'm just going to show you the technique, and you're the artist. So, whatever you want to do, thanks for watching. This is going to be a quick tutorial. I'm going to show you um, today how to do a wet on wet bird, a hummingbird. My mom loved hummingbirds since um, I did the painting of her the other day. Everybody was touched by it that I did it of my mom. So I figured out why not? I'll do a hummingbird. That's what she loved. She loved hummingbirds. Um, she used to have a feeder outside of her house. I just purchased this the other day. Um, these are water soluble pencils. So when you draw your figure, um, or whatever, you know, you're drawing, you're going to draw it right on here. It'll dissolve and you won't see that, um, you know, in the back of your painting. Um, I do have music on in the background. I apologize if it bothers you a little bit. Um, I can't handle complete silence. It makes me very anxious. So... This is washi tape. I like to do washi tape even though that I'm working in my journal. It just makes me feel a little bit fancy. Um, and it keeps the crispness while I'm painting. So when you're drawing a hummingbird, you're kind of going to do like an S type shape. Cause they're little, even though that they kind of look like a um, a bug, because they are so fast, they just remind me of that, um, like a little bit of an S shape, and that's how we're gonna draw it. It doesn't have to be perfect. Art isn't perfect, and it's gonna be a fast one so it's going to be flying and then I'm going to do a flower here kind of like one of those morning glories they look like a bell And that's what they like to eat. All right, so I have my under drawing that ready so I can um, start. Um, so I have an idea of exactly where I'm gonna be painting on. Sorry, I'm losing my train of thought. Um, these are different paints that I'm gonna use. I have a whole bunch of paint that I'm gonna use. Um, this one is one that I purchased off of TikTok. I believe this was, it's artsy. And it was either TikTok or, or um, I got the idea from TikTok and I bought it straight on. No, actually this one I did buy from, I bought it online, but I bought this from Amazon and I liked it because it had all of like the pearly colors and um, I didn't have any paints like that. So I wanted to try it. So I'm gonna keep this out. We're gonna, we're gonna use that on our painting. I'm also gonna put out my koi watercolors. Um, this is a travel koi. You can get these for about $28. Um, and you have all different colors here um, to choose from. It's nice, it's tiny. I like to take it when I go on vacation if I decide to paint. Uh, if you do follow along with me, if you saw the palm tree that I did, I took this when I went to Florida to visit a friend of mine. Her parents live out there. Well, they don't live out there. They have a place out there and they go, um, they're snowbirds. It gets awfully cold out here in the winter time. And then I'm also gonna do, um, use my Karandash dot Diach. I don't even know how to say it. I'm sorry. <laughs> I've heard it before, but I can't remember, but this is gouache. I love gouache. I use gouache a lot. 
Um, you can use gouache so it's like a like watercolor. You just don't use a lot of the paint, you use more water. Well, you know what I mean? You just like kind of like water it down. I'm gonna move these. I don't have a lot of area here, but anyways. So I'm gonna put these guys here. They're my gouache ones. And like I said, I love using gouache. I just love the brightness of it. Um, I started using watercolor because my, when my son was a baby, he had asthma. So I wasn't able to do, you know, um, watercolor. And I studied watercolor for many, many years. I had private lessons from a fabulous woman. Her name was Marianne During, and um, she showed me how to do oil. And that's what I thought I was. I also went into college, and I also took fine art as well as graphic design, and I'd always sign up for the oil painting classes because to me it was just an easy A because I had... Um, so many lessons with this woman. I, I was a private student of hers starting at 11 and um, I stayed as a student with her for about 10 years. Um, so, but anyways, I got into watercolor when my son Gabe was only a baby. He was probably not even one or close to it. And um, I, he is now 18. So I've been doing that ever since. Um, right now we are going to be using a round brush um, and these are great for watercolor. I like to use the round brushes. I like to use um, smaller round brushes, several different size round brushes. It helps me um, to get exactly what I want. Don't mind my dogs in the background. I have three little guys and um, one big guy. So these are nice too. I haven't tried these yet. This is a new brush that I bought. Um, I bought it online. You can see it has like uh, Chinese writing on it. So I haven't tried that, but I think it'll be great for detail. I love being able to grab brushes from all over. I think I bought those ones from Timo because I saw so many people buying um, art supplies from Timo. Okay, so here are more brushes that I just recently purchased. This one has the cat tongue brush. Um, I wanted to get that. Um, these are great for flowers and things like that. So what I do is I spray down my watercolor paint and my spray is over here. Excuse me, I gotta get it. So, I spray down my watercolor paint with a spray. Um, what it does is it activates them because I like to use the pan watercolor. I don't, um, I don't use the liquid watercolor. I'm just not a big fan of them. I just think it's a lot of wasted paint and it doesn't give me the pigmentation that I like. Um, a lot of other artists do use the um the liquid kind of watercolor you know where you have it in a tube and then you and then you put it in um you anyways you have to put it in a palette you squeeze it out and you add some water okay see i'm i'm too busy thinking of what i'm going to be doing so we're going to do a, a wet on wet technique so i am going to dip it in the water i have two waters um, so one is my clean water and one is my dirty water. So you're going to use your dirty water. Um, right now it doesn't matter which one because it's clean, but you're going to use your dirty water to change your colors. So this is going to be dirty. And then you're going to use your clean one. You're going to use this to wet your paper, um, because you don't want to use the dirty one because it'll make your paper dirty. I'm sure that makes sense. Okay. So I'm going to dip it in my water and then I am going to do wet on wet. So I'm going to wet this whole thing. Okay. 
Okay, so I'm gonna wet that because I'm gonna start over here. And then I am going to do more of like a rainbow. Remember how we did the rainbow effect the other day on the picture of my mom? That is what we're going to do here. Now you can see that I went over where I had the eyeball. So, oops, sorry. So, which is fine because I go back in with a one of these gel pens. Um, I like to use that, or you can even use, um, I like to use that to do any of my highlights, my whites and stuff, or I just purchased this. Um, it is one of the, the colorless art masking fluid, um, but I didn't use that today. What you do with this is you paint it on with a brush and then you peel it up after you're done and it won't let any of the, um, the paint go underneath. So that's what that is. So I'm cleaning my brush. I'm going to do another color. Um, so you want to do probably because of the fact that I'm using blue, I think I'm going to grab a little bit of green and I'm going to put maybe the green here. And as you can see, because it's um, wet on wet, it kind of billows. It's, it has like a billow effect, you know, where it's going right in there. Okay. And if you find you have too much water, you can take a dry brush, one of your dry brushes that you're not using, and you can take up some of the water with it, just like so. So if I'm finding that it's it's too much and I don't want it to um, flow into that area, then I would just take a brush. See how the brush pulled up that blue right here? Watch. So that's what you're gonna do with a dry brush. Okay, all right. So now I'm going to try another color. I'm going to go in with this color here, which is a pink. And that's my favorite color. And it doesn't matter. I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, again, I, I'm i not that type of an artist. I like to do art as like a stress relief. Um, and of course, you know, I do sell my work too, but um, yeah, I just, I just like to go in and just be more relaxed when I paint. Let's see how that's pulling right in like that, especially in that area here. It's pulling the ochre color. Okay. Maybe a little bit of yellow. This is my rainbow color bird. I love hummingbirds. So you can get a hummingbird feeder at the Dollar Tree for a dollar. And, and then if you find that, you know, you don't really, um, take care of it and then it gets ruined, it doesn't matter. Get another one for the next year. You know what I mean? Cause not, not that you don't take care of your things, but sometimes we forget to bring things in in the winter time, especially I do. Um, I'm not going to lie. And so anyways, and then they also, you can buy the hummingbird food, but what it is, is if you look online you can get the recipe for it. It's basically just sugar water. And then they just add that red coloring. So if you didn't know that, fun fact. But the hummingbirds will come like right, to, it's, it's amazing. Um, I had gotten my one friend a hummingbird feeder and she never, had them come before and they were coming to her place. Um, she, we both lived in these apartments. This was years ago. And so I bought her one from the Dollar Tree, you know, because she helped me out with my kids. I was a single mom at the time and, you know, we, we just helped each other. And um, so I bought her one of those and she was so excited. And now she still does hummingbird feeders to this day. And this was like 14 years ago. Um, but they literally, they look like, um, 
they the hummingbirds actually they look like bugs at first if you're not used to it so it's kind of funny because they're so fast and it's just like a magical thing if you see a hummingbird okay so see how i put the the purple in there and i just lightly dabbed it on there And then I'm going to use the black so you can see the other wing. And then we're getting a little bit more purple on this side so he can be kind of matching his other side of the arm or not arm, the fe the his wing, his crazy feathers because they are, they're just crazy. And if you don't have a, butt, a hummingbird feeder in your house or, you know, in, in your backyard, you need to get one. Like, you could, if you don't feel like making your own food and you just want to buy that, it'll cost you $2.50 and you'll be amazed on what you see. I'm going to put a little bit of the purple here. So he can be a little bit more matching. A little more matchy. There we go. And then I'm just lightly pulling. I'm just pulling the paint that's already there around so it could have like more of a wispy feel. Bring in a little bit of that ochre that was on my brush over in this area. Okay. I'm already loving how this is looking. And look at, see, I told you, I'm always using this. I, I find that I keep on using this because I love the pigmentation. Um, if you're going to buy um, gouache or watercolor paint, definitely use this brand. It's amazing. Um, it's more pricey, but if you do get the pans, they last for a long time. Um, you're not going to waste money by getting that. It's definitely worth it. So I'm going to try, I'm going to go into the other colors over here and bring that in over here. I gotta wet this whole thing because I didn't wet it. But that's okay. I still have that color on my brush. All right. And then I'm going to bring in maybe some of these pearly colors. But I think the pearl is more of a highlight, probably. So I'm going to get out of that and not use that anymore. And I'm going to bring in... Um, a lot of times when I'm painting, I want to do like um, the complements of each other. So the complementary color of blue is orange. So I'll bring that in. So I'm bringing that color in. A little bit more orange over here. I just mix those two colors together. Oh my gosh, look at this. Oh my gosh, this looks so nice. These colors together. Oh, do a little bit of the red here. There's his beak. Look at that long beak. can I do like I said when you when you're painting something like this you kind of just do your own thing if you want to be if you just want to put a, all different colors in here in this flower go for it so I just added a little bit of the pink just because it looked pretty to my eye looking on here add more of this blue and 
And then I'm gonna take my dry brush that I used before, pull up. Even though that that orange was a cool color, it was kind of overtaking, overpowering. If I brought in any other colors and see how it made this color kind of yucky. So now I'm gonna take this out. I'm gonna do a little bit more of the pink because pink is my favorite color. What's wrong, Penny? Penny's my German Shepherd. She's a big crybaby. She's the biggest of all of my dogs. I have a Chihuahua and I have a um, another one that we thought was Chihuahua, but then we, um, the other person that, um, got the sibling, ended up doing a DNA test. And he's like, uh, Kelly, our puppies are not chihuahuas because they were um, dogs that I saved. And um, turns out she's called Super Mutt. So she only has like a little bit of chihuahua in her. So I have a full, full, um, a full blooded chihuahua. And I have a, she is Coco. Our Coco is called a Super Mutt. So she's super cute though. And then I have a puggle. Yeah, I have a problem. I can't say no when um, my sons ask if they can have dogs. And then guess who ends up taking care of it? Me. So as you can see, I'm adding all of these different colors. Um, go in, pull up some of this color again. But look at how nice that is. I mean, it still has like a cool color going on here. So I don't even know what kind of flower that is that I'm painting right now. I'm just kind of doing my own thing. Doing my own thing, chicken wing. Look at these. These metallics are like so cool. I've never had paints like this before with like the metallic -y color. So I really find it's, it's really neat. I'm just waiting for my... Oh, good. It is. I was waiting for that other part of um, the painting to dry a little bit so I can go in with detail and do a little bit more detail on them. Okay, so I'm gonna go in and do part of the... I like to outline my work in black, like a darker, like one of the darker colors, you know? That's um, how I like to work. So right now I'm gonna do this part. I'm gonna do blue, the dark blue. And then I'm gonna go down a little bit. I mean, you're obviously not going to see their feet because they are tucked in underneath. Because this bird is flying. And he's sucking the nectar from the flower. So when you do watercolor, you want to start with one of the lighter colors first. You're going to do the lighter colors first, and then you're going to go back in, and then you will do the darker colors 
on top, which is kind of strange, right? Because normally you would do a highlight of a lighter color, but not when it comes to watercolor. Watercolor, you want to start with light colors and then work your way up. And then you're going to take a break, work on different things, let that other area um, dry. So then you can come back and do the fine details. pulling up some of that color because I don't want it as dark. I'm using another one of my dry brushes to pull it up. There we go. Okay, so you just, you know, you do your own thing, like I said before. Just keep painting, and um, you, will, you will get exactly what you're hoping for. And um, one thing that's really nice is if you paint in a journal, um, the journal thing is my new thing for this year. Um, I never used journals before. I always would just go and paint on... Um, you know, the regular expensive paper. And I never thought to look into um, buying a journal. Um, I didn't realize, to be honest, I didn't realize that they had such high quality of paint of journals. So I'm really glad that I'm, um, that I've learned about this by watching other content creators. It's, um, it's, you know, had I had all of this when I was young, it would have been really, really nice. I mean, the, the youth of today, I just feel like they're so, they're so lucky. There's so much you can learn from online, but there's also, you know, you, the other things too, that with bullying and stuff like that, you got to be careful too. So I don't know. It's a double-edged sword when it comes to the internet, I guess. Well, for sure, not I guess. You know, there's there's a lot of good from it, but there's also some bad. So, but that's with anything. All right, so right now I'm just doing like a lot of the extra highlights and, and things like that. You know, um, extra detail. There we go. I'm doing a little bit of a petal here, another petal here. And then I'm going to do some splattering in the background because I think it's fun and I like how it looks. kind of gives that funky feeling not funky it, it kind of just gives it like a, a finished look with not doing much you know but just splattering and I like it so that's why I'm gonna do that splatter splatter I like to get close to close to your paper or you can even just use like um, a piece of paper and cover 
your main area that you don't want it to be on the splatter and then you don't have to worry about it getting on there there cover his face and then right here so if I'm splattering here it's not gonna really get anywhere but where I kind of want it to get I mean if it gets on part of it that's all right whatever it is what it is right I'm gonna put a lot of paint on this one because the sky is blue and I want it to be blue. So it is good to cover it if you're gonna do a lot, lot of, like I am, a lot of water to really splatter it. Come on, get over there. Get where I want you to be. All right, let's see. Voila, that looks cool. Voila, voila, voila. And then I'll do closer because I want to do this area too. Bam, bam, bam. Bam, 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 bam. bam. So here I put a highlight right in the eye and then I'll come in. This is that gel pen that I told you about. You can use the gouache to go in and do your highlights with because um, they do give you this within um, your paints. So actually, I will put a little bit of that on my palette. And see, that's the thing. I A lot more came out. That's why I don't ever use. I rarely use um, the watercolor in the containers. I'm going to go through and bring some highlights. And I'm doing that because I don't like how wide that bottom area became. So instead, I'll just bring in my highlights this way. And then it makes it look, um, <clears throat> it makes it look more, more realistic and, you know, to get out that thick line. I kind of got it. It was a little bit dirty, not as white, but that's all right. And that's because my, the paint's not completely dry. A lot of times I'll make it dry with my heat gun that I have. But right now I'm in between my um, studio and a lot of my stuff is in my basement right now because I have, I have a studio. If if you um, been following me, I have a studio that is being done as we speak, and right now we're we're at the um, part of the stage. You know, we're putting the electricity in and and uh, insulating it and stuff. So it's going to take. I would say because I'm doing a lot of the work myself, and my uncle's helping me too. Um, it's going to take about a month because I'm I do a little bit at a time. And then I move up and do the next and do the next. You know what I mean? I, I take breaks. Like it took us two hours just to do like 40% of the building. It's, um, it's 12 by 20. 12 feet by 20, which is pretty big. Bigger than, you know, it's, it's probably, you know, 12 by 20. I think like a living, a standard living room is about that. So it's a decent size. All right, so I, I did some of the highlights with the white. I just like to look over and make sure that it has everything that I want so far.
So sometimes it takes me a minute just to look at what I'm working on. I'll go back in with a little bit of the black just to get this a little bit more precise. shaking. I have a hand injury. I don't know if you've, if I, like I said, if you've been um, someone who watched my videos in the past, you know that I have a hand injury. So yes, I've been painting for many, many years, but um, I ended up getting a hand injury about, it's it'll be four years this summer. It took many, many weeks of occupational therapy. That's why I have these yellow things on my brushes. They're for people with disabilities. And it helps you to grip. And then I'm going to put some yellowish, that yellow orangey color right here. And then sometimes if I don't feel like using a brush, I'll use a marker to go in and make some of the black marks that I want. For some of the details. So yeah, I'm not completely a watercolorist because I go in with extra with marker and everything else, but you know what? The way I see it is if it's exactly how you want it to be and you love what you're doing and you're creating art, it's okay, it's called mixed media. There you go. All right, so now I'm just gonna sign it. There I go. Okay. All right. Well, everybody, please have a great day. And you can do anything you put your mind to. So never give up. I know I didn't. So neither should you.